I, 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 you know, I, I can't say that I've ever thought that we should discriminate against certain group of people. I just have never felt that way. I've understood that. And it also seems to me that, you know, and I know, you know, this, this also rubs people the wrong way, but it's the truth for me, and I can only speak my truth. For me, I, I've never seen any difference between discriminating on race and discriminating based on sexual orientation. To me, yeah. those are kind of the same. I was going to uh, say that. And a lot of, to yeah, and a lot of those arguments about, you know, discriminating on race, those folks who want to still kind of hold us back on in terms of race, make the same arguments with, with respect to sexual orientation. So it seems kind of the same situation to me. Exactly. Uh, in fact, when we've had some talk, and again, it's just talk. It's not much of anything yet. But we have had some talk among some Republican legislators recently in Nashville to say, you know, we should do some protection for our Tennessee State employees yeah. uh, who may not want to be a part of marriage equality. Yeah. And so what they intend to say is if you come in for a driver's license and you are part of a same-sex couple, that the state employee could raise an objection, some sort of faith-based objection, and not serve it, serve you. And so what that leads to, obviously, is two lines of the DMV. Right. You know, the, the one line serving the same-sex couple, wow. the, the, you know, the, the, the gay guy, and the other line serving the straight line. So that was just talk. I don't think that's going to get anywhere. They right. were just talking out loud. But this still happens in our committees, our official state committees right now. And so I just never thought that discrimination against anybody was uh, should be tolerated. And you know, we're also all Democrats, and Democrats are the party of diversity and inclusion. It is the large uh, stakeholder uh, party. Uh, and we've got a lot of different constituencies, constituencies, constituencies in our party. We want to make sure they, they're all treated fairly. Right. So uh, before we get off the air, uh, two quick questions. How can we increase diversity, and why is diversity important in the, uh, the Senate and in, in city government and everything, in your opinion? So diversity is very important in terms of when it is time to make a decision. Yeah, and exactly. I, I've already kind of talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that I think you can make better decisions yeah. if you hear from people that have different perspectives because right. people bring their own set of experiences mm -hmm. and their kind of uh, blinders. Right. And so you want to hear from a variety of people before you make a decision. That's why it's important in decision making. Mm -hmm. The most important thing when you talk about uh, government, uh, actually, when you talk about city government, because yeah, I hear a lot of different things coming through in your question, to me is to uh, play up local. So we, we, got, we got to do a better job because we, when I, when I, when I Part of me, when I hear your question, I think about city contracting. Uh, and yeah. I think diversity is important in city contracting, yeah, it is. but it is not as important. And this is just Lee Harris speaking. Uh -huh. right? I don't know if anybody else out there agrees with me. Uh -huh. It is not as important as local contracting. Right. So, uh, you know, when it talks about contracting, I want you to get somebody local yeah. <laughs> before you get somebody out of town. I agree with that. And, and we don't do a good job. Sometimes we conflate the two. Yeah. So MLGNW and the city and their and county commission and all these various governments that deliver reports, uh -huh. they tell us about black folks they've hired in California, right, uh, or Hispanics that they've yeah. hired in Canada. Yeah. Well, not, you know, not so fast. Right. <laughs> I want to hear about Memphians because one of the major failings in the city of Memphis is we don't have a middle class. We don't. And one of the easiest ways to create a middle class is just through basic government contracting. Yeah. Is you make sure that you focus all your energy and your attention in terms of contracting yeah. on Memphians. If you do that, You'll create a middle class. It won't be a huge middle class. You've right. got to have private sector, of course, to create the kind of middle class we need. But you would at least have a middle class. And right now, we had not even done that. I agree with that. Yeah, I think I think that that was swept under the rug for a long time. Oh yeah. About those contracts. Oh yeah. And who they were going to, and how they were pretending not to know, and they said that they. Uh, well, I'm talking about MLG and W. Uh, the, the, the tree tree cutting. Tree cutting. I mean, that's all these contracts. I mean, you compare it to Atlanta. Yeah. You know, Atlanta, they, they make no bones about it. That they create their they create their initial middle class just based on contracting. That they, that's what they did. That they had a, that they were gonna redevelop the airport. Yeah. And that that airport, all those contracts were gonna be for folks in the city of Atlanta. Well, we we we, we redeveloped our airport. Wow. <laughs> you go there, it's nobody in that big airport. I was like, what kind of airport is this? I know. Yeah. It's a ghost town. They need to put a nightclub in the airport. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. I That's mean, creative. Like people will go there, and it would be like a party when you come through Memphis. 
we just had someone here from California, and it was like, he was like, that's the worst airport I've ever been in. You have too many pilots over there in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the A party at the airport. Hey, hey, hey it's there's, up. There, there is room, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, we have uh, five minutes. You want to make any closing statements? Uh, shout out, shout out, shout out to your wife and your kids. <laughs> sure, I don't know if they're listening. They're probably <laughs> outside playing, but yeah, send a shout out to my wife. My wife is Elena, and my kids, my son is Lee. He's 10 years old uh, next month, and my uh, daughter is Claudia. She's seven years old next month. So I love to send a shout out to them, and a shout out to you guys for creating and founding this show. This I think this feels it feels an important gap, but I think that getting the word out, right? That's the first step in service is making sure people know that there is a problem. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. I mean, we're approaching our, our one year coming up, so uh, it, it, it's been great. It's, I, I think, you know, it's been well received, and, and I feel nothing but great things uh, ahead for us. And we definitely want to extend the invitation to have you back on the show. I'd like that. To come back and, and, and talk about your, your community and, and let us know when you got a meeting so we can put that out there for you if you need us. We're here if you need us. Our, our doors are always open. Thank you. And I want to thank you personally for being a, a young, smart black brother and taking this invitation, like my mother said, and uh, being a man of your word. Your word is uh, pretty much, uh, I've met a lot of politicians. I know a lot of them. I graduated high school with no name uh, politicians. I'm not going to call their names out, but I spoke with you. You said something and you delivered. So that means a lot of man or woman who can deliver on their word. So I respect you for that. And uh, matter of fact, Many politicians won't even give you their email address. You gave me your email address, your personal email address, not your uh, work email address, and your cell number, and you respond back. So I appreciate your uh, uh, being authentic and uh, real and everything. And I, I have nothing but respect for you, uh, Senator Harris. Thank you. And I'll just speak on behalf of the community. I know uh, I, work, I work for another entity, and our ordinance didn't pass, but I was so happy for the city of Memphis that that was able to come through and I know my little son, he was out there fighting so hard. He was so passionate. And I was like, get him, baby. Uh, I, I got something out on the county commission. I'm going to get him the next. Uh, oh, I'm going to call his name out, but I'm not going to do it. Terry Rowland, oh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> we got some work to do. Yeah, he's a little thundercat. Oh, I'm going to get him. But nevertheless, um, I just want to uh, thank you publicly for yeah. uh, you know, helping you know, put being a voice, yeah. you know, being an ally, yeah. and standing up and being on the right side of history. I just want to thank you publicly uh, for the LGBTQ community. Yeah, and, then, and speaking of Terry Rowland, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> just, just sort of relate. Terry Rowland represents Millington, uh -huh. and we're gonna try to do a Veterans Day event in November in okay. the city of Millington. So I'll bring you more details as, as we firm this up. We're gonna try to buy dinner or buy lunch for veterans in Millington. So anybody, by the way, anybody who wants to help with that event, please uh, reach out to me. All right, and uh, also, um, we have an empowerment event on August the 31st. So I've been saying it all show. Register online, please, www.relationshipunleashed.com. It's a free empowerment event. Uh, we're looking for sponsors for this event, more sponsors for our radio show. We want to thank all our sponsors, our listeners. Once again, we want to thank Senator Harris, thank Robert Woods, thank John, Mother Dearest, anything else? Yeah, I want to send a shout out to my best friend, Faye Wilson. It's her birthday. Faye, Faye Dudley Wilson in Atlanta, Georgia. She's big five. Happy really? birthday, Faith. Happy oh, birthday. How old is she? 50 what? I can't tell you. I'll tell all of you. Oh. But anyway, I want to say hi. I know my friend Terry and her mama looking in. Happy birthday, Barbara. Barbara. Yeah, Barbara just turned 60. What? I can't tell you. She want to go to Tunica to the casino. <laughs> you can't go. <laughs> and to all our listeners, we appreciate you so much, but because without you all, we wouldn't be here. So we hope that we represent the community to the highest standard and meet all expectations, what exceed your expectations for the Only Boys Radio Show. And to Robert Woods, our fabulous intern for standing in for Eddie. He's, a, he's out there selling somewhere. You know, he's on a cruise. Yeah, uh, he's in Dallas cruise. this week. I think he's on a cruise next week. But you know, we, we had a great time in the studio today. And Absolutely. We have a, a great show coming up next Saturday. And uh, we want you all to stay with us, keep supporting us, and keep tuning in. Close us out, baby. And register to vote. Get your voter registration oh, form. Elections coming up. We need you to register and vote. All the young people, 18 and over, vote, vote, vote. Senator Harris, thank you again, my brother. Thank you. All right. We'll see you here. next Saturday. Ow! <laughs> <laughs>